Coming up on Doctype, we're going to take some sandpaper to that sappy web 2.0 look and explore the world of texture. Then, I don't care how fast your website is, it's still too slow. We'll tune things up with some JavaScript performance. So grab a pen, some paper, and a quart of 10W40 because it's time for Doctype. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by the Front End Design Conference and GoDaddy. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that thinks JavaScript is a decaf latte, or a developer who can't tell his margin from his padding, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you the emperor of the interwebs. All right, so did you see that huge news that happened this week? It was so awesome and relevant and oh, man. current. Yeah, actually, that's a complete lie. We're recording this episode a week in advance, so if some huge news happened, we don't know about it. Sorry, we're from the past. Yeah. Anyway, this week I'm going to be talking about texture in web design. And I'll be showing you how to shape up your JavaScript with some hot performance tips. Let's check it out. When designing websites, texture is one of the most important elements of design because it can add a lot of variation to your visuals. You've probably heard of the grunge look, which usually features ink splatters, drips, torn up paper, and more organic elements. The grunge look tends to come and go over the years, even before the web existed. Although this particular style is a great example of how texture can be incorporated into a web design, your site doesn't have to go for the grunge look in order to leverage texture. For example, you could make a very elegant background that looks like wood paneling or stone, or you could create a more sleek and futuristic look with brushed or sandblasted metal. When looking for ways to use texture, you might use pre-made textures, or you might try creating your own. You can use texture in your site's background, in the header, or anywhere that you feel you need to add a bit more variation and visual interest. Just be careful not to add so much texture that you distract from the important parts of your site. You can get a lot of textural elements just by searching around the web for images, following tutorials, or playing around in Photoshop. A great way to pick up some rich and original textures, though, is to use a scanner. You can scan in all sorts of interesting things like crumpled pieces of paper, a woven sweater, or a tablecloth. Another great source of texture is a digital camera. You can look through your own photo library, or you can go outside for the day and take pictures of interesting brick walls, the bark of a tree, or a crazy carpet in a hotel lobby. Once you've gathered your source material, you'll probably have to massage it a bit in Photoshop to fit your website. For example, you may want to turn a picture into a repeating texture for use in your site background. When we come back, Jim is going to show you how to optimize your JavaScript. If you're a web person, you're going to want to check out the Front End Design Conference. It's a one-day design conference in beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida on July 22nd. There are seven amazing speakers that will be covering a wide range of front-end design topics. There's even a cool after-party and a whole weekend of mad geekery. Jim and I attended last year, and it was a blast. Head on over to frontendconf.com and get your ticket. Early bird tickets are just $99 and only $129 later on. We hope to see you at the Front End Design Conference. When working with JavaScript in the browser, sometimes it's important to make sure your code is running as efficiently as it can. Today we're going to be taking a look at JavaScript performance. One obvious place to optimize performance is inside of loops. When working with loops, you want to look at the work that is being done over and over again and try to minimize it. Now that really depends on what's in your code, but take a good hard look inside your loop and see if there aren't any calculations or functions that always return the same value. These really only need calculated once, so you can put them before your loop, so you don't have to calculate them again and again. Also, if your loop is comparing its iterator variable to the length of an array, we need to realize that there is a cost for looking up the length of an array. And since it generally doesn't change in most loops, you can store the length into a variable before the loop and compare it to that instead. DOM manipulations, string manipulations, and function calls are the biggest things to watch out for, so try to minimize their use inside of loops and you'll likely see an increase in speed. Resolving variable names in JavaScript does take time. Now, several factors influence the resolution time of variables, but you can't beat a local variable in terms of speed. One slowdown is if your variable is defined several scopes higher than your current scope. 
In this example, jQuery is defined in the global scope, and inside a deeply nested scope, we're using that jQuery variable several times. And each time, the browser needs to find out what it references. This involves searching several scopes for the variable. Each one of these may be fairly large. You can speed this up by redefining jQuery in your local scope, so you can resolve it without having to search up through the scope chain. Now obviously, you only want to do this if your variable is referenced several times. If it's only used once in the first place, this extra piece of code will actually be more work. Another slowdown that can happen is when looking up properties. For instance, Yahoo's YUI2 library has a lot of deeply nested functions and properties that keep it organized. Here, if we're using the deep yahoo.util.dom.get function over and over again, we can make it faster and easier to type by assigning it to a local variable. Often, you want to change the styles of your elements using JavaScript. For instance, jQuery's CSS function allows you to change multiple style attributes all at once. But this is costly. Each property requires the browser to reflow, or recalculate the position and dimensions of the elements on the page, and this is very, very slow. Instead, you should try to utilize CSS classes and apply or remove them from the elements. Doing this allows the browser to do a more efficient reflow instead of several small ones. Creating elements in JavaScript can be costly as well. If you want to create an ordered list with hundreds of elements, instead of manually creating each element with create element and appending them, you can try creating a giant string of HTML and using the inner HTML property of the list to assign it and let the browser do all the hard work. And as a bonus, when you're creating a string from little pieces, it's much more efficient to create an array of small strings and push onto that array and then join them all together at the end than it is to constantly append the string over and over again. Check out the show notes at doctype.tv for more information on JavaScript performance. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you going to go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctype.tv from? So we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you going to use? Enter the code DOCTYPE3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply see site for details get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com that's it for this week until next time be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype tv on twitter and if you have a question like answered on a future episode of doctype send us an email at questions at doctype.tv and if you subscribe via itunes or rss you'll never miss an episode of doctype so why not so until next tuesday remember that every great web page starts with doctype <laughs>